ചിന്നഞ്ചീര് കിളി with us an artist who has reinvented her art and her life in very significant and in a very very interesting manner Savita Shastri the renowned Bharatnatyam dancer is here with us welcome to India video uh, Savita thank you when we speak of Bharatnatyam as a classical dance form and we are talking about it in 2013 how do you see the contemporaneous elements in this dance form and how do you how do you attempt to fuse the traditional and the modern i think with any art form the intangibles are what supersede the tangibles in allowing the sensibility of the person who's delineating the art in this case me as a dancer for me to communicate what i am the beauty of the art form evokes a tremendous response how do i take an art such as bharatanatyam that has very many almost alien concepts or inter intellectual aspects to it and make it more relevant um is a very significant question because bharatanatyam as many of many of the viewers might know is an art form that came from the courtesans the dancers who practiced it and there were certain traditions and certain uh, paddhati as it's called that they followed largely dictated by their clientele and a need to keep them within um within their sponsorship now that need has been removed but the art form still persists the beauty of the art form is not questioned at all the physicality the musicality of the art form continues to be relevant however the content has to change to become applicable to the times of today and that change is what i'm trying to bring about in bharatanatyam i understand perfectly i think you have come up with very significant points about how how relevant this art form is in today's world uh, as far as i understand bharatanatyam this dance form has three very significant aspects to it it right uh, there is the the nitta or the pure dance uh, there is also the nritya which is Uh, i think uh, the hermeneutics of dance it's all about interpretation it's about miming uh, uh, a performance right. to the to the to the music right to right. the song there is also the abhinaya uh, which is a drama part of the dance right right uh, how how do you in your uh, dance performances what kind of a, a fusion do you try to bring in how do you balance these three what kind of proportions do you mix them in for me to take bharatanatyam and then to make it a communicative art form um there is a storyline now the storyline dictates the expressions and the characters that are in it quite simply because there is a structure that i have to adhere now where do i bring the danceability into it how do i dance board a story that has been written for me for um instance in my previous production soul cages when the story was presented to me this was exactly the the um predicament that i was in how do i take it and then communicate the abstract forms that can be so easily written out um now bharatanatyam even though it has been used to tell stories of krishna and radha and devi and which are more um visual in certain aspects it can also be 
in a very malleable way used to communicate feelings, abstractions. So the nritta, the physical form of this dance, can be used to also communicate feelings. The expressive parts, which is when I use my face and I use my gestures to say come or there, those are very obvious. Now, when I use my movement to show bondage, then I'm using my entire body and the expression on the face communicates that this is bondage. If I change my expression, I could be experiencing something very pleasant. So the physicality of that movement, the nritta aspect of it, can also be used to communicate feelings. And it's the way that you balance when a story is what you want to bring to the forefront. You want to balance enough of the physicality of the form with the storytelling so that you never draw away from that aspect of it. Because my role as a dancer is to communicate whatever the content is. And thereby, what I'm also doing is placing the emphasis on the content and making sure that the art form and the content get highlighted. Okay, that, that does make sense to me now. Uh, I was also thinking, I mean, uh, this is wonderful theorizing you're doing on dance and I mean, there's a performance part, but there is also the need to theorize about the art form, I think. It, it, it pushes the art form forward. I was also thinking, this is a question that I have wanted to ask you actually for some, quite some time now. Uh, when you speak about a dance form, uh, there is all the time this constant harping upon about the aesthetics, hmm. right? Right. I mean, for example, Bharatnatyam. We're talking about uh, the aesthetics of harmony, of beauty, of mm -hmm. perfection, and a combination of all these different kinds of uh, aspects of beauty or the making of beauty. Absolutely. But then there is also a political aspect. There is an ideological aspect which we really cannot escape in today's world, given the kind of postmodern post lives that we all seem to be leading. Right. Uh, how, how do you look at, uh, I mean, for example, your location as a dancer could significantly alter your dance. Where you're performing, where you're making the performance, could actually qualify the kind of dance that you would be performing, right? So your location, your strat the strategies that you're using, your beliefs, uh, all these things qualify your art. Sure. So how do you how do you strike a balance between the politics and the aesthetics of Bharatnatyam? The caveat is always that art needs to be relevant. So within that statement itself, I have I have a certain box that I have laid out for my aesthetics, which is the times that I live in. And in, in the context of what that means to me as a dancer, I think it needs to connect. And where those connections come from, it could be from, um, you know, as, as simple as um, my personal experiences to um, what I feel very deeply about and I need to communicate. And at this juncture, what I feel most pressed to communicate is the very beauty of this tradition. Because in the context of Bharatanatyam today, it is almost getting into a stage when people often say, oh yes, there is Bharatanatyam, there is this beautiful art form, but I would rather watch TV. How much of that effort is being made to go watch Bharatanatyam in a stage performance has become, in some ways, what is defining me as a dancer to bring this art form to limelight. So what are the, the manipulations that I'm having to do? What are the concepts that I'm, the stories, the, um, the mode in which that I'm communicating? All of that is being fashioned by this almost apathy that people seem to have. However, in their minds, they're harboring a sense that this is important. So I'm trying to make this art form more engaging. 
and certainly that that does that does mean that the structure of the art form might need to sequester uh, technological aids. It might need to sequester storylines that um, that might be more intriguing to the present day. However, what I wish to retain is the aesthetic itself in maintaining the classicism of the movements, the harmony, the beauty, the grace, the communicating ability, and let that speak for itself and bring back the relevance to an art form that um, doesn't seem to connect in that sense. The difference between, say, a courtesan presenting her art form and my dance today is the use of lighting, the use of um, aesthetic props, um, the, uh, even the, the voiceovers or the brochures that are given for um, easy um, access to what I'm doing for the audience. The whole import of it being both the intellectual and the um, aesthetic sensibility of the audience need to be satisfied when they're um, viewing my dance and that is the only way that I can get complete engagement to a point where it becomes an edge of the seat experience. Okay, so does that mean that uh, your dance and uh, the strategies of your dance would change when, say for example, mm. your location, if you're performing in LA or in right. London, would the dance be different from, say, if you're performing in Chennai or uh, another place where the people who are watching your dance, the audience would be significantly different? You know, you bring up a very interesting point of view and, and um, there is a perception that there are certain places, for instance, Chennai, that the audience, by virtue of being in a city where um, there is a lot of exposure to this art form, has a lot of knowledge about it. And it might not necessarily be what um, you might find in Los Angeles or another place, or it could actually be quite the reverse because there is this uh, imminent need to preserve culture abroad. Whatever be the case, as a dancer, I find that all this um, you know, manipulation that I do with my fingers tends to be mumbo jumbo for the predominant part of the audience and touching the chord of the audience could very well be exactly the same thing in different parts of this world. Um, it's like taking a piece of music that A.R. Rahman made and evoking the same response no matter which part of this world you are in. It is not that he needs to remake the music just because it's made for another uh, pocket of audience. It's connecting with the sensibilities. Yes, I use a various, various means and modus operandi to get them to understand my dance. And I might have to use a regional language if I'm in India in a particular pocket um, versus English, or if I go to Europe, I might have to use a European language. It's mostly to do with the accessibility. The dance per se rises above language. And I don't need to worry about that part um, it's just the storytelling where I use the voiceovers. That is the, the um, only part which I change based on location. So in, in one sense you are saying that your dance communicates before yeah. it is understood. There is an instant communication that art opens up. Right. Uh, even if, I mean, it's not a question of understanding. It, it runs deeper, I, I, think, right. I think. Yeah. Okay, I, I understand that.